of all education sectors, higher education has been the most active in the adoption of new technological developments for management, research, and teaching and learning. The rise of learning platforms during the pandemic has also contributed to increasing explorations of the use of artificial intelligence in higher education institutions. And we have in the region both institutions and companies that are leading the way internationally. Yet, what we didn't expect was the sudden generalization of conversational artificial intelligence, such as in chat GPT. In my view, chat GPT is for knowledge creation and management, typical tasks that students and instructors perform in higher education institutions, um, an electronic calculator on asteroids. Um, ChatGPT certainly can provide the students with instant access to information, but on the other hand, there are concerns that it could be used to maintain the trend of ghost writing and paper mills, which have long been damaging academic integrity in education. A significant number of institutions in countries ranging from Western Australia to the United States and most recently to India and France have moved to outlaw chat GPT completely. We at UNESCO hope that this is not going to be a general move. Because artificial intelligence considerably impacts upon traditional teaching and learning methods and this advancement has created a shift towards more student-centered and experiential learning methods and greater concerns regarding academic integrity, of course. Let me first say that the shift towards student-centered and experiential learning methods highlights the importance of reimagining assessment methods to evaluate student learning and progress accurately. Reviewing how we conduct assessment developing educational resources for staff and students and prioritizing a student and staff education rather than implementing like blanket bans and adopting punitive approaches focused on catching users of ChatGPT will be key here too, at least from our perspective. On the other hand, academic integrity is the ethical foundation of education and students and lecturers must be fully aware of its importance to avoid artificial intelligence undermining academic integrity, universities in particular must implement clear guidelines and policies on using artificial intelligence in education and academic work. This involves, of course, educating students about academic integrity and the dangers of depending too heavily on artificial intelligence systems. Moreover, if students feel the need to cheat, then there is likely to be a concrete reason why that goes beyond the technology. We urge professors to think themselves out of the adversarial battle of who can outsmart whom in the giant game of presumed cheating and suggest that professors who require essays concentrate on the writing process, for instance. You don't want to read what uh, students wrote 10 minutes to midnight the night before the essay is due. Instead, two months in advance, you may want to see the initial ideas they have and provide feedback on them. A month before the due date, you may want to see an outline and some of the citations the student have come up with. Then, you may want to see a rough draft that you will comment on. The final product, they say, will become then really a revision and not something that has been produced overnight. Universities and individual academics can and should do exactly this with generative A technology. They should explore it, find out its limitations, consider its potential uses in the context relevant to their disciplines or teaching, and discuss all these with the students who are likely to be using it already. It is essential that leaders in the education sector ensure that our courses are designed and delivered in ways that prioritize engaging and meaningful teacher student and peer-to-peer -peer interactions and think about how we support the development of AI literacies within our curriculum in the same way as we support the development of other academic and digital literacies. 
Finally, let me mention that our institute has already published a guide on artificial intelligence in higher education that can be easily downloaded from our website. We also have a free of cost short course on its applications in, its, in our website. And we are about to launch a manual for higher education administrators and lecturers. We are so active in this area because we are convinced that there is a need to develop further the capacities of our most important stakeholders. Otherwise, if these actors, particularly teachers, administrators, and of course students, do not understand and lead technological developments, artificial intelligence may turn against them and our shared values. Thank you very much.